Welcome to ATP Report. Today, we are back with part two of the Islamification infiltration of America with Phil Haney, as you know, founding member of the Department of Homeland Security, long time involved in law enforcement, uh, protecting our borders from invaders like we're going to talk about today, and an expert on Islam in America and its terror networks around the world. Phil, thanks for coming back. You're welcome. Thank you very much. In our last episode, we ended with shocking news from you. And that news was at the conclusion of the Holy Land Foundation trial, it was perceived uh, by the public because law enforcement said so, that there were three organizations connected with this group whose leaders were sent to jail and are still in jail for supporting terror around the world and effectively running a network of fundraisers from Islamic groups across the country, taking in millions of dollars and sending it to the terror group Hamas, whose intention is to kill as many Jews as possible. When we left off, you said there were three organizations that were next to be picked off. Give us a quick survey of each one of those, would you please, Phil? Yes, the Council on American Islamic Relations, which is in the news a lot, easy to look up, known as CARE, C-A-I-R, originally founded in 1993. So how long ago is that? 25 years, if my math is right. And they're still operating today. They go into the halls of Congress. They go to the State Department. Everywhere you turn in Washington, they're showing up. They file lawsuits against law enforcement agencies, interfere with training programs. They were one of the three organizations that we referred to earlier that were meant to be part of phase two of the Holy Land trial. And that would have been initiated probably early 2009 if the Department of Justice lawyers had been allowed to go forward with their case. They had the evidence. It was already laid on the table. The judge approved it, and they were going to go forward with it. But then the administration changed, right? The same month, 2008, November, everything changed. And immediately, the Obama administration shut the case down. Shut it down. We're not going to do it. Then the second organization was called Islamic Society of North America, ISNA. It's still active today as well. It originated in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, back in the 60s as a student's organization. And then as the number of Muslim students came to America, they began to restructure and grow, and they formed an, a branch called Islamic Society of North America which is very prominent in political affairs this very day. One of the past presidents is Imam Majid, who is in constant photo ops there in Washington with members of the FBI or other branches of the federal government as outreach and dialogue partner. And then the third one is the more shadowy, but it's actually no less influential than the first two. It's called the North American Islamic Trust, or NAIT. And they own the deeds, the titles to the real estate, the property and the buildings that are the mosques and the social built the buildings of these different uh, Muslim organizations around the country. They hold it. And those were the three groups that were going to be the main focus of the second phase of the Holy Land trial. So if you know or have a good idea, can you tell us why the Obama Justice Department stepped on part two and prevented it from going forward, even though the judge had seen the evidence and approved it? Yeah, you might recall that Peter King from New York used to be the chairman of the House Committee on Homeland Security. He wrote a letter asking that exact same question to Eric Holder. Why have you not gone forward with the second phase of the Holy Land trial. Can you guess what answer he received from Eric Holder? Let us know. What is it? No, he didn't even have the courtesy to respond to it. They did. They just decided not to follow through with it. 
And then the chairmanship changed from Peter King to Mike McCall. And now the chairman has changed again. We're talking how five, 10 years now, there's still been no, no effort, no uh, focused effort to bring that trial back and, and reinitiate it. So it was Eric Holder, who was uh, the DOJ, the attorney general under Barack Obama, who shut it down. That we know without, you know, it's, it's part of history. So give us a couple minutes while we digest that horrible news. What has CARE been up to since the Holy Land Foundation trial concluded? Oh, CARE has, uh, I use the word saturation, saturated into the three major arenas of, of our country. And that would be the social arena. In particular, the catalyst in that area is immigration reform. And and they've attacked and they have gone after immigration reform, calling it the Muslim ban. So in that area, they're very visible. The second one is a political arena. And they're very active promoting pro-Islamic causes in whatever arena you want to discuss, up to and including the State Department. And the third arena is law enforcement. And they constantly file lawsuits and, and send threatening letters to local law enforcement uh, sheriffs and police that want to have training about the threat and coerce and intimidate them into shutting the programs down. So every one of the major three arenas in our society, CARE is there exerting an inordinate amount of influence on the affairs of our country. And it's unfortunate because they should have been shut down more than 10 years ago. And that's the point I would like to make is that elected officials can't say that they didn't know because the Holy Land trial was a DOJ trial, was very, very public. It wasn't in a corner hidden somewhere. It was a national story. And so everybody in Congress, House and Senate, knew full well that this trial was going on. So for anybody from November of 2008 till now, to continue to do business with care, that's a very, very serious issue that needs to be addressed. Why are they still involved with individuals and organizations that have been proven irrefutably in federal court to be tied directly, not only to the Muslim Brotherhood, but also to Hamas? Unbelievable. We're gonna leave it there and bring you back for part three, and maybe you can answer that question for us. For now, thanks for joining us on ATP Report. I would remind all of our loyal viewers out there to text the word TRUTH to 88202, 88202, and you will get signed up for our mailings. You'll never pay anything for ATP materials. You'll get our videos, our articles, almost on a daily basis so you can keep up right on your cell phone. Or if you're more traditional, <laughs> meaning you want it through the web, just type in findberry.com on your browser. That'll take you to American Truth Project. You'll be able to sign up there. Again, it's always free. Special thanks to Phil Haney for joining us on ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. <laughs>